I said, hey, hey, welcome to the man cave happy hour. I said, hey, hey, welcome to the man cave happy hour. We're gonna drink a fine whiskey and smoke a really fine cigar. It is time for happy hour. It is the Man Cave Happy Hour, whiskey, cigar, spirits, the stories that go along with it. I'm Jamie Flanagan. I am Matt Fox. Matt Fox, how do we find ourselves in these amazing <laughs> Man Cave If bunkers? I was not given explicit constru- instructions on how to find this place, yeah. I would not have found it. We, in on any the door, way, it says form. private club. The. The private club. Private club. We yes. Are, we are literally in a private club <laughs> uh there's like lots of people here hanging out yes. um and they're here for a very specific reason we're here for a very specific reason correct and we're tasting stuff tonight matt uh, i haven't tasted something in a few weeks i'm kind of excited yeah. to uh dive into something we have never tried before i well, there's a there's a i i cheated though Uh-oh. i had some of the i had some of, i had one of them already oh okay I so cheated. you're kind of, you're coming yeah. into it uh, with a little bit of knowledge so but there's so much there's so much to try <laughs> and there's so much to do it's unbelievable ah so uh jamie i know you're taking a, a drink of your um beverage yes but uh we have a very special individual with us tonight as well well and that's it we're uh, enough pussy footing around yeah let's get uh, into this on the man cave with us today is uh, Nolan Smith, the owner, chief cook and bottle hey washer. Guys. Thank you. Thank <laughs> How you. many hats do you wear, right? <laughs> Back phone. Yeah, yeah, there's a few, but uh, um, we're a small company, but uh, I wear a few hats. Yeah, so sure. it's uh, it's it's a uh, backbone uh, bourbon company. Backbone bourbon company. And uh, so it and this is uh, is it you? Is it a group of you? Was uh, there's three of us? Okay. Um, the I have a, a partner. A founding, uh, we both founded it together. Um, we started the company in 2014. Okay. Um, and then we have a third person uh, who's been with us for a year and a half. And um, that's a full time salesperson. Ah. Um, so wait, when they're out traveling, are they traveling right now through Michigan? Where are they uh, focusing a lot they of their are efforts? Midwest. Right now? So um, this particular person lives in South Bend. And so Michigan is his new favorite market. Ah. Uh, he tries to get here as much as he can. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, he gets on well with uh, our distributor. Um, is that Steve? Steve, yes. Yes. Yeah. Steve's amazing. Steve yeah. is Steve is how we got connected. Yeah. He uh, seems like he knows everybody. And right? yeah. So he's, uh, he knows uh, us. I don't know. <laughs> got to be careful with that. Yeah. 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 So we, we really enjoyed meeting Steve and, and he brought us to you yeah. and, and all these. But before we go per- further with Backbone yeah. Bourbon. Yeah. Nolan, tell me about your childhood. Tell me about my childhood. <laughs> Come on. What's your story, Nolan? Well, uh, I I grew up in South Africa, Durban, South Africa. Okay. Um, came to the U.S., went to university in Indianapolis in the okay. late 90s, did an MBA there. And then uh, I was able to stay, um, met my wife, and then they couldn't get rid of me. Ah. Uh, <laughs> But uh, your wife or Indiana? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think Indiana likes me enough. All um, right, all right. <laughs> um, you know, my wife, I think, sometimes wants to get rid of me. But, um, but you know, I have the story. I tell my wife. I, I came on the fourth of July. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was nineteen ninety six. The first day I set foot in this country. And mm. I had a backpack, two pairs of shoes, and about eight hundred dollars in my pocket. Uh-huh. Now, according to my wife, yes, I have the I've lost the backpack. Um, I only had I was barefoot when I arrived, and I had five dollars in my pocket. That's that's how the story has kind of gotten down to. Um, but uh, you know what? I I love being in this country. I love being a um, an American, mm-hmm. but I also love kind of being a foreigner. Yeah. And um, I think this is the greatest country in the world. Um, I think it's easy to. If you if you're from a place, it's easy to take it for granted. But I, I tell you, this is the best place in the world, mm-hmm. and and I really to be to have a, a business, to have a family, mm-hmm. um, is a real is a real pleasure for me. Do you get back to uh, the homeland every once in a while? Not, not a whole lot. Yeah. Um, we we try to go last year, but um, no, we haven't we haven't gone back as much. Okay. Um, our kids are getting older, so we a little bit easier to travel, but um, but not as much as we would like. That's fair. So, it'll yeah. happen. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we, so let's get that. Let, I love that story. I, lo- I always love asking that question because people have stories that that they. It's a true we, story. It was a backpack, eight hundred bucks, uh, two pairs of shoes. I still got the backpack. Yeah. Um, I don't have as much cash anymore. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> See, how we many kids skipped... do you have? <laughs> yeah. We, we could have skipped right over that by mistake and uh, missed that. Uh, oh. But yeah, we appreciate you bringing in because now Backbone Bourbon isn't just Backbone Bourbon. It's uh, there's 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 rise yes. and there's yes. uh, some clear spirits. And mm -hmm. yes. there's a uh, how many different expressions do you have? What I what we call is core products. We we have around six. Okay. Um, there's two rise, three bourbons and a gin. Um, you know, when we started the, the company, um, you know, we. <laughs> We did the gin as a backup in case we didn't have any whiskey that was ready to sell. So, and we both like gin, uh, my partner and I. So, we don't sell a lot of gin, but I couldn't imagine not having a gin. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. So it it, it the I I'm, I'm digging it because a backbone, if if I'm not mistaken, your kind of philosophy is you want it to be uncut. You mm -hmm. want it to be you want it to be straight and unfiltered. Mm -hmm. Does that hold true for those? That major six or the five, yeah, the three, the two rise and the three bourbons. Are they all yes. uncut and yes. unfiltered? Um, they, the only one is really a truly uncut. Yeah. Um, the others are what I would call virtually uncut. Right. Um, so that's how we started. We felt like that would be the one key thing we could do. Um, we we actually started these. Um, we started Backbone Uncut in 2010 as a private label for another business we have. Mm. And, you know, we had this little sample from the distillery, the distiller we still buy from. And we kept tasting it. And, you know, it was a barrel sample. It was a high proof. And we just couldn't believe how good the barrel the barrel sample tasted. Mm -hmm. But we, we kind of knew, being in the alcohol business, that everyone kind of did a 90 proof. And we kind of played with a 90 proof. And, yeah, it was, it was okay. But, man, that... The, the barrel sample was great. Yeah. You know, and we kept referring to this should we cut it? Should we not cut it? And so, you know, eventually we, we got um, this is one of my favorite stories, but we got we got we got an expert. I love how you put in quotations. We, we, got, a, we got an expert. This guy owned his <laughs> own bar. He owned his own bar and uh, a great bar, uh, cigar bar, and he he thought of it more of as more as a bourbon bar mm -hmm. than a cigar bar. So uh, this this uh, wonderful gentleman, uh, we we brought him over to our to our business. We had probably about a hundred milliliters left of a two hundred milliliter sample, hmm. and um, maybe maybe not that much, maybe a little bit less. Um, it was my partner and I. Um, it was one of our senior um, sales guys at the time, and then the expert. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful summer night. We're we're at the back um, on the ramp, and I poured this the entire contents of the sample back into a glass like mm -hmm. this. And the idea was we were all going to try it uh -huh. and we were all going to, you know, chime in on, you know, kind of have a, a meeting about it. Well, this expert turned his back to us, he put it up to the stars, um, looked at the color, swirled it around and down the whole damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> and he turned, he turned around and said, don't cut it. And you know what? We haven't cut it since. So that was 2010. Um, and it was kind of a crystallizing moment that this is how we want to, this is what we want our business to be about. Um, right to the bones. So, right to, <laughs> yeah. So, so the, the backbone name, there's a Creek in Southern Indiana called backbone Creek. Okay. Um, and this know, is, this comes, this hails from Indiana. This, mm -hmm. is, this is an Indiana produced, um, bourbon. Mm -hmm. The distilleries in, um, in Indiana, it's MGP. Um, I'm sure the aficionados that are listening know, know. MGP mm -hmm. very well. Oh okay. yeah. And we, we have other distilleries, but for the most part, we uh, that's the that's the distillery we, we, we buy from. Um, so Backbone, not nice strong name. Uh, we kind of felt like uh, it represented a good Midwestern characteristic. Mm -hmm. You know, people with integrity and character. Um, and you know, um, we we created a label that um, was pretty simple. Mm -hmm. uh, we we kind of wanted a Wild West theme. You know, someone going into a bar and saying, give me a shot of whiskey. They didn't ask what kind of whiskey. They just said, give right. me a shot of whiskey. Right, right, right. And that whiskey wasn't some fancy dancy 90 proof. It was whatever came out of the barrel, <laughs> which they had in the back. So we crafted our labels um, that way. They do have so, a, a, a Wild West kind of yeah, feel to yeah. it. Um, and I, yeah, the rye. I love the rye yeah. bottle, the tall, the bone snapper, straight rye. And we're going to get to all of these. Yeah. Uh, I'm calling an Uber. Nolan, I think uh, he's like, well, I go, which ones are we going to try? And he like lined up like seven. And I'm like, oh, boy. Uh, wife? 
<laughs> honey, can you? All right. Um, so Nolan, all right. So like you said, there there's six your your six mainstays, uh, but you have some other ones that move in and out. We do. We have some special releases. Um, we have some. Um, we have a, um, a a super reserve bourbon called Old Bones, and uh, we we only release that when we can find um, one the the whiskey that meets the quality profile. That's uh, the ten year reserve. That's the fifteen. Is that the fifteen? Oh, even better. Bones. Old, Old bones. bones. Yeah. You turned um, it around on me. I couldn't read. Yeah. 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 The ten year's got a black wax seal. Ah, oh, fair. And, and the fifteen, we did a we did a red. Got red it. wax so um all right this is coming in at 107 proof that was nice. what was the barrel that was yeah. the barrel so so we typically like about 110 proof um on some of the special release stuff we feel right. like that's a um a premium kind of proof because your 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 bourbon drinkers the guys they like it hotter and hotter they mm -hmm. like it you know the guys that are you really get into bourbon once they really get into it yeah they 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 want the they want the they want, bring yeah. the heat yeah. you know yeah. they want to they want to feel it i want yeah. the warmth yeah have you, you guys like curry do you like indian curry yeah. because if you do the the, <laughs> the, the, the the downward slide on indian curry is you just want it hotter and hotter right. and then when you get it so hot you go back to the mild stuff you can't drink it anymore right. i mean eat it that's yeah, what, yeah. you know so but i do feel like um that there is more flavor in in a high proof um you know there are there is a, there is magic in that barrel. There's there's oils and there's, you know, from the wood obviously, but but there's a combo of of, you know, <laughs> a, a magical thing happening in that in that barrel. And when you put water in it, and there's nothing wrong with drinking ninety proof no. whiskey. Nothing wrong with it at, at all. Um, but you sort of lose a little bit of that that magic mm -hmm. that's in that barrel. And what we want to do is get people as close to what's in that barrel. Um, you know, if they wanted to try our stuff and, and afford our stuff, then we want to try and give them, you know, as much for their money as possible. Hmm. So, All right. it's, so it's really that simple for so us. So sometimes, uh, sometimes it's 10, sometimes it's 15 for the old bones. Right. That's, that is, uh, we, and we, I never thought I would find some 15 year old, uh, whiskey. Now that is actually from Kentucky. Okay. That's, that's from okay. Frankfurt, Frankfurt, Kentucky. All right. Um, we, we are not allowed to know the actual distiller. Mm. Um, and that's how that world works a little bit. Um, when they when they source it for you, they keep a little quiet. They keep a little quiet. Okay, uh, and that's okay. You know, Fair um, enough. if you don't need to know where that's distilled, once you've tasted it, you know, once we tasted right, right. it, it was a very easy decision for so us. So now, to, now the, the this fifteen year is it's it's because you're got, coming out at barrel proof. How many barrels are you putting together? A few barrels, or you, yeah. Uh, so we had enough barrels to do three batches. Okay, uh, we got. A little over 206 packs out okay. of mm. the first lot of barrels. So these are pretty exclusive, then. Very exclusive, yeah. Okay. That's, um, you know, I would, I, I don't know. Uh, we're on the lookout, and I think there'll be more opportunities. But I, I think these three batches of 15, mm -hmm. all bunch 15s, will yeah. be collector's items. Um, I don't think they're going to be around very often. Wow. All right. All right so, so I'm trying to smell it. Yeah, yeah, off the nose. So what, uh, I'm, getting, what, I'm getting floral. What, now, uh, you did grab, you, when you had to, uh, when you did your pick, when you picked this, what were you looking for? Well, uh, you know, we when you when you uh, taste a lot of bourbon, you're looking for something that's well made. You don't want to have any off off putting uh, aromas or tastes. You don't want anything industrial. Mm -hmm. um, you want a nice integration of of the whiskey and the wood. Um, honestly, I think this is a very soft bourbon. At a, uh, at a, it's at a buck ten, right? The proof is one hundred seven. One hundred seven. I'm sorry. One hundred seven. Okay. Yeah, it's a very soft bourbon, and 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 I think it's about right for fifteen years old. You know, these things don't they don't last forever. Mm -hmm. um, they've got a certain life point um, or a, or a lifespan, and I think at this point in in this bourbon's life, it's you know, it's certainly if, if it were a person, it would certainly be you know. Uh, later in you know later in one's life where they've slowed down a little bit, maybe a little bit more deliberate in their uh, in their lifestyle. But huh. the one thing I love about this bourbon is the cherry. It's got a lot of lot of those red fruit notes. Okay. Um, the some of our other bourbons have a lot of attack up front, um, but this is very gentle up front. Um, it's got a great mid palate, lovely finish, but on that finish I get a ton of cherry. Okay. Um, because I've been uh, sniffing, and what I'm sniffing is is caramel and sweet. 
Mm -hmm. I sniff caramel and sweet, but there is a, a nice color to this too. There's almost a red. It's got that amber, uh, very amber. Yeah, red feel to it. Amber. All right, enough talking. Yeah, let's let's dive in. Yeah. Mm, okay. You, See, can, you can feel the proof. Yeah, you feel the proof. You feel it, it's it's like because it smells a lot sweeter and a lot lighter, but you feel the proof. So we're a, we're a bit susceptible when when it comes. If someone says, "Hey, cherry Power suggestion, cherry, they, they, cherry," I'm going, "Okay, there it is." I'm thinking cherry, blackberry. I'm trying to find that fruit. There's you know? a, there's a fruit component to it. Right. right. Um, you know, I'm going I, pomegranate. There you go. <laughs> you know, you don't get a lot of those, but they get fleshy apple. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there is a red. You're right. It is a red fruit, yeah. uh, a cherry, pomegranate. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that and that warmth is just lingering for for a bit. Yeah. It's not on the upfront. It's just it's sitting on the palate, yeah, the back just, of my throat. It it's, just it's, it's the finish is, out. is long. It touches yeah. sweet on the tongue on the yeah. way in, and then mid tongue and back it really warms up yeah yeah i'm gonna and then, savor then the next sip. The, it's wow and it's it just it it's was, hanging out yeah right and that's the thing you don't you, you oh, that's never, got, yeah that's got some serious yeah, you never want to sit back and go shoot whiskey if we never do that yeah. in any way shape or form you want something that you can sip on absolutely for a while absolutely. you know maybe have a cigar with it as well yeah but this is one of those bourbons in my in my mind that I would sit back and just enjoy yeah. while watching a television show yeah. or a movie or what have you. Absolutely. And it, I wouldn't go through it very fast because it lingers. Right. For so long, you don't have to keep going to back to it. Yeah, and um, you know, the, bourbon is so cultural in this country. Um, this is, you know, they they've said this about tea, but bourbon is not necessarily a drink. Mm. Um, it's an experience. It's a pastime. Mm -hmm. um, and when you're sitting around having a good bourbon, mm -hmm. it, life is ten, tends to be pretty good in that moment. Fair. You know, you, you'll you'll seek out great spaces. You'll you'll seek out friends. Um, so, you know, it's more than just the drink. It's mm -hmm. it's it, it's what you what goes around bourbon that makes it just such a you know a, a great experience. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's not as big. You know, it's not as intimate. Sometimes there's no one around. It's just you. Sometimes it's a crappy day. Sometimes it's a great day. But yeah. It still feels like it still feels like you're part of something, you know. Yeah, that's my feeling anyway. Yeah. You know, everyone's got a daily drinker, right. right? You know, a lot of folks say hey, that's what I have on the daily. Well, good for you. Why don't you enjoy something that you can that you can sit back and relax with? Sure. You know, with you know, you're by yourself or with friends, you sure. know, and share. This is a very shareable bottle. This is something that you'd want to share with your buddies mm -hmm. and, and with your friends, for that matter, mm -hmm. right? You mm -hmm. know, sit down. And, hey, I found something incredible. It's it's a it's 107 proof, but you know what? enjoy it right you know absolutely couldn't you know, agree more great gift you know great gift idea always you know yes. bourbon's always a great gift idea don't get me wrong yeah and, <laughs> right and it can last i mean you know this one can be brought out at certain times uh, of the year mm -hmm. um and, and maybe just feel like this kind of flavor profile i think mm -hmm. that happens a lot in the bourbon world you know where you've got maybe you don't have as many maybe you've got three or four where you just feel like yeah it's that kind of day for that kind of drink um so again, I think this is a very soft bourbon. Um, I, I think it's, I think there's kind of a, a grand old lady to feel to it to me. Not, I mean, I mean that in a very positive way. That that uh, if if I had to think of a person, it's someone who's, you know, got a lot of grace and has maybe been a little bit more spirited at some point in, time mm -hmm. in their lives. But you, but but they've they've calmed down a little bit. But you can you can when you talk to them, you can still feel that kind of <laughs> that, that that zest for life, that's, that passion, that's that there. passion yeah. that, that's in there. Um, so well, back in my day, back yeah. in my day, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, love it. So, um, so that was the first bourbon. You said after we tried that, we should uh, dive into the, the rise, rise yeah. a little bit. I wanted oh. to do the rise. The, the the old ones I want to do first because I think it's probably the most delicate we've got here tonight. I think it's more probably would require a little bit more thought on getting the full experience. I, I wanted to go to the the rise because. Well, I don't know if I had a really good reason, but I wanted to finish <laughs> with the finish with the bourbons. Um, sure. But the rise, I've got two different kinds of rise. Right. Um, the the but bow snapper is, um, I think, one of the. It I love. It might be my favorite name of the whole the whole <laughs> deal. Um, you know, on the back of bone snapper is well, we we kind of made this up, but it's a surprise. I love you know? I love this little bottle. Yeah, I love, uh, it's broad shouldered. Um, yeah. It's but. 
but it's um you know the that font of that rye i tell you when that came out in 2011 that that font has been uh used by other companies uh, okay. um, yeah. and that's fine I, yeah. I think that's fine but yeah, yeah. but um the distressed it's got a little distressed feel to it exactly and uh mm -hmm. yeah you're All right, gonna, so, so is this one the one we're going to go first? Yes. There's, there's the go, Bone Snapper and then the Bone Snapper X-Ray. X-Ray. And X-Ray is a reserve. Okay. Um, X Bone Snapper original is um, – it's a lower price point. Um, it's still a high proof. It's 108 proof. Right, right. Um, and the typical age is around 30 months for that. We might do a little bit younger. We might do yeah. a little bit – This guy says 31. 31, okay. <laughs> and, and it's a really critical um, – age of the barrels because after once you get to about three years old these barrels start to change and they become a different personality and really the two rise represent the, the two places that these barrels get to and go through um so with with bone snapper original um it's certainly got a lot of you know vigor and spice and Ooh. zest um that you can kind of feel like there's some tension going on <laughs> With there's a, there's there's different parts of the, of the flavors that are trying to come together and and, and dominate. Um, there's a little bit of uh, like teenagers coming together, e right? Exactly, right. exactly. They, there's they don't know exactly what they want to be yet, but man, they've got a lot of they've got a lot to say, <laughs> whether it makes sense or not. Um, so, uh, kind of a herbaceousness to this. Um, there's a little bit of a of a spearmint, um, or there can be at times. Um, I don't always get that. But uh, there's kind of a zinginess to it. And what you'll find with the other one, it, it's not quite as sweet as the X-Ray. Hmm. Um, and, and I want to say that carefully because this has got nice sweetness. There's no question about it. But because of all that's going on, some of that sweetness is, is masked up a little bit. Whereas with the X-Ray, it's, it's just kind of out there in the open. It's a much richer, fuller whiskey. Huh. Yeah. It's mash bill on this. 95 Rye, wow, okay. 5% malted barley. Okay. Wow, okay. That is rye, rye, rye. That's, that all, is that's a, a rye, big rye. rye. Yeah. And it's, uh, All right, dive in. All right, so spice, you, you would say spice, yeah, spice, that, spice. The, the spice spice is there. Yep. You said spearmint, and then I'm, I'm waiting for that. I almost want to go out and get my double mint gum. <laughs> right at the same time but you know the there is a there is a mint to that there 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 really is but that that heat it's not heat it, it's warmth and it's really not it's not bite your face off you know well, what i mean there's a there's a little bit of pepper underneath that mint yeah. there's a, a little pepper underneath the mint for me mm -hmm. pepper's a good one yeah um, we we do well with this in in bars um we, we find the uh, the proof helps helps it in cocktails Mm -hmm. You know, you can really, you know, one thing I don't like is a, is a, just an overly sweet cocktail. Yeah. Um, you want that, you want that structure of where the, of the underlying alcohol under it. And this I think does well, the proof really helps that. Um, but this is our, uh, I was telling um, one uh, a gentleman earlier, this is our biggest seller throughout the country. Um, which is ironic because we have bourbon in our name and our company name. Right, right. We sell, right. you and know. you sell a crap ton of rye. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe we should change it to Backbone Whiskey Company. Uh, <laughs> oh boy! But I want you to think about the sweetness because when we when we touch the X-ray, I think it's going to be. Uh, well, is that is is it is it tremendously different or is it just a tad bit different? It's it's in between. Um, it's not vastly different. Um, but it's certainly not just a little bit different. Fair, for okay, sure. for sure. Yeah, there's um, there's more spice in in this. There's a, besides just the pepper and, and the spearmint. Um, there's another spice in there. I'm trying to put I like, my, I like put my tongue on. I like pepper. Um, it's kind of like a, you know, I get like a kind of a pepper pounding on my on my, you know, the back of my tongue. Yeah. Um, this is a uh, limestone filtered, is it not? The the, the 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 bone snapper is that limestone filtered at all or no no nope. um, the when you said that I immediately thought of the aquifers we have um, we have a ton of aquifers in Indiana and okay. MGP uses um, I think two or three aquifers so uh, that's important because that aquifer's got those mineral 
composites, I don't know if that's the right word, but, um, you know, a lot of people think Kentucky's the center of the universe, but Indiana has everything that Kentucky has. Right, right. Um, we've got, we've got the, the corn, uh, we've got the aquifers, uh, mm. we've even got, you know, the hardwoods. So back in the day when this was all getting going, um, you know, we had we had the, the raw ingredients. Um, I don't know if it was the same, you know, back then, but, uh, you know, I think I view Indiana as kind of the island. Hmm. What island is to scotch, um, I see <laughs> sure. Indiana, uh, yeah, I'd say Tennessee and Indiana is, is more the, the island of, you know, Kentucky. Sure. To bourbon, so. So, what it, so MGP does um, the distilling and the, bar the barreling. Mm -hmm. Um, are, are you guys involved in, in that at all now that, you know, you're getting bigger or are you, um, or are you just sampling barrels and, and finding we, things that fit your profile? We are sampling barrels. We are picking from what we okay. try. Uh, okay. Yeah. And then, cause, cause the, the, we found talking to people that the wood has so much to do with oh it my as, God. as well. Oh, everything. Yeah. 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 Everything. So the wood is a, a major player and a major component. Right. Um, you know, and picking that wood. So th is this Indiana wood probably? Then? No, no. The, the, Where they these they? days it's, um, most of it comes from, from the Ozarks. Yeah. Mm. Um, you know what, <laughs> what you guys should find is find someone in the, in the oak barrel business mm -hmm. and ask them how they can continue to supply all the bourbon that's being barrel because <laughs> I have no freaking idea how, how it's amazing. Them. We can still breathe, right? Oh, I know. Yeah. All the trees. Yeah. But I think these forests are so big. Um, that they just after a hundred years they get to the end of the forest and they go back and you know <laughs> the beginning of the forest is already you know the Ready trees are 80, again, 80, 90 years old so yeah. but the wood is is everything yeah um, we we have um, situations where we control the barrel more than than at certain times okay. um, and if I had to do it all again I would probably do everything in a particular kind of barrel, mm. specifically a barrel that's uh, dried for longer, air dried for okay. longer. Um, there, there was, uh, those kind of barrels are often used in the wine industry. So not necessarily a different char, but just something that's aged a little bit longer uh, as far as the wood goes? Right. Air dried, aged, because um, what happens is with bourbon, with corn being, corn is very rough ingredient it's a very overpowering dominant ingredient and and so it doesn't need the most finesse when it comes to the oak barrel so you can you can age something for a few months mm -hmm. and you know really that that kind of flavor profile has become traditional in in uh in the bourbon world but in my opinion um having a really good barrel um adds an intensity to the bourbon um and I, and I can give you an example. Uh, we, we have a very robust single barrel program. And in 2014, um, when we were starting um, back on Bourbon Company, we couldn't find any barrels. Um, we, could, we could spend millions of dollars if we wanted to on, um, I'm just using millions as a way to emphasize <laughs> sure. how ridiculous it was that we That's couldn't fair. get any barrels. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. We, you couldn't get any barrels. So you could buy all the liquid you want in the world, but you did, it didn't have a barrel, it right. nothing. There was no home for it. There was right? no home for it. Yeah. And, and so what happened was there was a bad winter in, uh, in you know, 13 to 14. Mm. They couldn't get the wood out of the, out of the forest. Mm. Um, at that point in time, the, the, the demand was increasing. So all these big distilleries were ordering more barrels. So there was, there was a demand issue. So for most of 2014, we couldn't get any barrels. So I, I, would, I found, I found a, a cooperage that would sell me a few here and a few there. And these were, <laughs> wow. um, these were barrels that they were making for the wine industry, for a oh. high-end uh, California winery. They were dried more. Than they were dried more three mm -hmm. years. Um, mm -hmm. And they were very expensive. I mean, these were three or $400. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I bought them because, you know, is there anything we had? Come to find out, four, five, six years down the road, these were the most unbelievable barrels, uh, uh, um, and as I say, the, the the they added richness, they added intensity to the bub. So when you say the wood is important, yeah. I say it's just about the only thing that really. Well, it's, you have to have yeah. good distillation. You can't yeah, yeah. have right. crap, crap distillation. It's really a risk reward at that point because yeah. you took the risk on you know using a lot, utilizing that cooperage. Right. But the reward was something that you really, really enjoyed and wanted to put out. Right. 
and okay. I think the the bourbon business is you know it, it doesn't happen quickly it happens over time so what happens is with the time you make mistakes you make mistakes anyway but but sometimes when you make mistakes or you take a longer you know route to the to where you're trying to get to it can really work out in the end because really what you need is time yeah um, and, and over time we have another uh, set of barrels where we bought um, early on in our in our history we bought bourbon and totes like in a plastic uh, tote wow. <laughs> oh, good God. So, and that was all that was available we wanted aged stuff so we bought it it was very expensive and and then we rebarreled it into another new barrel so it was two and a half years in one barrel mm -hmm. dumped and put in a tote and then we bought it and then rebarreled it and you know what uh, those barrels today are drinking they are some of the most popular single barrels we have that and what's unique about we call them a double barrel but what's unique about these double barrels is that the second barrel is has had the longest amount of time. Mm -hmm. Often the single, the second barrel has less the time amount, yeah, than the yeah, first time. Yeah. So I send these barrels out for, uh, you know, to on our single barrel program and I, uh, they, they get stamped up you right. know, immediately. Wow. But yeah. yeah. Um, so, so you can, you do do, I said do do, uh, you do do <laughs> You're a barrel picks for stores. <laughs> yes. That's and, a, that's a big part of our business. Yeah. Um, we, you know, I, you know, but it is kind of the profile. You kind of help guide that profile to be kind of backbone, and then from there, it's whatever the barrel is. The barrel is right. Well, yes. Um, I think the uh, as far as the DNA goes, we we love we love the single barrels because I think I've only had one person not do not bottle it at barrel strength. Okay. And I think this particular barrel was in the 130s, so they they might have cut it down to 120, but everything we sell in a single barrel is at barrel strength so that fits our profile our mm. dna yeah um very well but you know what our, our approach to single barrels is to provide variety well, you know and and so when you're a new bourbon company or whiskey company it's very difficult to have variety but after you know six seven eight years we've got a ton of variety and the variety is not only the different kinds of whiskey it's the ages of whiskey mm -hmm. Um, we have a, a significant finished, finished barrel. Mm -hmm. Finish. We put it in a finishing cask, yeah. basically. Okay. We've got a lot of that stuff, and we've got traditional things like sherry and port and rum and cabernet, but we've also got some non-traditional things like amaro and mezcal and vermouth, and so variety is our. Uh, uh, it's definitely a, a big deal when it comes to our single barrel program, but it's all high proof. Right. One of the things that uh, we've always talked about is expand the expansion of your palate, right? As a bourbon company, as you continue to grow, you're continuing to expand your palate yes. into other spirits at yes. the same time. Yes. Right. So, what would happen? What What's on the docket in the next couple of years for Backbone in that regard? As you continue to expand, um, I think we're going to stick to whiskey. Good. Um, I, think, <laughs> yeah. uh, I think stick with what uh, stick with what's stick, good. But what what is going to happen uh, and is happening is I think we in our in our DNA, we have uh, we we were, we have the ability to, to blend together, and it's a very um, it's a century old um, pastime. The Scots have mastered the, the ability to blend, um, but I, I see us putting whiskies together that become you know greater than the sum of their parts. Mm -hmm. um, we have one that we're going to taste a little bit called the. Uh, Decade Down, which is an anniversary release of Backbone Uncut. What's it called again? Decade Down. Decade, Decade Down. Decade so down. it's uh, so 10 years. Is that years. the 10-year? Yeah. yeah, it's a 10-year Look at me with the like, Look at you in your mask. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and that's a blend. Um, and and again, it, it, it sort of goes back to this uh, having having the barrel portfolio, having the variety um, that we've been able to, to you know, pull together, uh, you know, for the last six or seven years. So, um so yeah, that's yeah. that that I see I see more of that happening at Backbone, um, where there's more special releases uh, okay. coming out. Right. Um, but that's not to forsake the core. So, so this is a Fair special release. Uh, the, the the reserve, the no, X-ray. No, is, we we have that available pretty much always. Oh, okay. Oh, so bone yeah. snapper X-ray. Yeah. Uh, it's X-ray, but it's just been aged mm. a bit longer. Four years. So that so that one. Um, the nose is very different from the the the, the one that we yeah. just tried. To yeah, the can X -ray? You, yeah. Tell me, tell me what you think the difference is, because I was I was actually thinking about that the other day. Um, because it's aged a little bit longer, I would imagine, on the X-ray. So, yeah, 
on the because on, on the one that we just did before we what was the 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 uh, the, the, the rye right, right. the bone snapper snapper. rye yep. Yep. um yeah I really didn't get much off of the nose but with this one with the X ray I'm actually getting a little more pepper off of the nose itself personally so I, I know that there's going to be heat there's always going to be heat no matter what and there's going to be the warmth and that's that's one of the things that really grabs my attention is yeah. the warmth itself so from you, from the bone snapper ride to the bone wreck the bone snapper X ray yeah there's more of a nose on it and I'm getting more of a pepper on it yeah um, the you know when you taste a lot of bourbon um, you have to think of a million ways to to, to describe how sweet something is right yeah. right yeah I get a sweet uh, sensation I get a little bit of that pepper you're talking about yeah but I don't get the sweetness that that the uh, the bone snapper has on it so I, I'm getting more of a you know when I put my nose actually in it there, there's more there's more of a fruit to it at this point I can't place my my palate on it just yet because I haven't tried it but I, ju I just know it's going to be it's going to be a little bit more of you know I hate to say the word bite because that that word just you know, it, it, it irks me right so um so when you say bite, I'm thinking alcohol. Okay. Um, maybe not. Uh, maybe not exactly what you mean, but um, I'm trying to. I'm trying to think through. He's like, he, I think it's like more of the the spicy pepper. Yeah, the spicy pepper. That, that's, that's the bite. The bite that he's I'm, talking about. The, the, that's the bite that I'm thinking about. So I, I smell when in the, on the nose I'm smelling uh, not a corn sweet, but I'm smelling a sugar sweet. Mm -hmm. it, it's what I'm getting on the on the nose. And now I'm right, going, so, now I'm going to taste it. Yes, Tim, <laughs> I just tasted it, and this is something that um, I could sip on uh, on the norm, mm -hmm. just because of that, that. You get that feel right away, right on your palate, right on the right on the roof of your mouth. You know it's there, in a in a very nice way. You're getting your you're getting your your, your rye. You know that it's rye, right, right on the. Roof. What is the mash? It's a lot more one? complex. Exactly the same. Exactly the same so one. It's just aged a little bit longer, yeah. right? Yeah, so, so it's a lot more complex. It is. Yeah. So I'm getting, um, Jamie, it's, a, it's something you said, um, but I'm getting a little bit of those kind of baking, uh, a little bit of baking spice, but I'm also getting kind of a yeast. Like, yeah. Like when bread rises, I'm getting a little bit of that kind of in the middle of the palate. Um, it's it's not as sweet as I, uh, you know, as I remember, um, but that might just be, I don't know. Where we it's, are it's, today, it's, uh, it's doing <laughs> well, something to the altitude. You've, uh, been, you've had a number of these already. We've been tasting it. This is the no, third taste no. we've had, right? <laughs> and my altitude is flying. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is it's it's doing something on the roof of my mouth. Yeah, it, the, more so than the other rye, um, mm -hmm. and more so than the. Uh, just, I love how it lingered. It just all three of these. They've just lingered in such a nice way. Yeah. You know, as we as we're having our conversation, I'm just sitting. Here, I'm I'm more enjoying the yeah. the lingering effect yeah, yeah. than anything else. Because yeah. you can take, right. you can smell it up front, you can get the taste notes, but then it's that after effect right. where you sit back and you're like, all right, so now I'm getting, I'm starting to get a little bit more of that that warmth. Yes, and, and you can feel that vanilla that's laying on the back of your palate in the back of your throat, right? I will say this about the two rise. Yeah. Um, they have been a lot more consistent than the the two main bourbons we sell. And that sounds like a bad thing, but for me, it's actually not. So the two bourbons we're going to taste next, one's Backbone Prime. Okay. And the other one is Backbone Uncut. Um, backbone Prime is uh, sits at a price level similar to Bone Snapper. Um, should be about a $35 retail. Um, Prime is a blended bourbon, so we've got mostly straight uh, bourbon in there, but there's a little bit of rye and there's a little bit of light whiskey, which oh. is... A little treat we have for the very end of the, of the show. <laughs> you know what I'm getting? I'm getting pine out of this bone snapper. That's what's on the roof of my mouth is pine. Pine. So on the x-ray, you're getting a little kind of a like a cedary pine, um, pine tree. Pine. Yeah, pine up on the roof of my mouth afterwards. That's that's the that's what I was getting there. Well, okay. I think that can be a little bit of a of a spearman too. Okay. So um, but, yeah, but the pine right. is is a good call. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. yeah we just uh, make shit up. <laughs> we just well, what, what, what else are you going to do in the man cave? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I make a lot of shit up. So, <laughs> Matt, I'm going to switch some bottles. You make some shit up for a second. All right. So I'm going to make some yeah. shit up here real quick. So, yeah. no, uh, Nolan, help me. Talk about the packaging. Yeah. Help me Help me understand how long it took you to get the packaging, you know, through our, our, our wonderful government that we, we are all a part it's of. It's really quick. 
Is it quick? Yeah, the, really? The feds do a great job. I mean, it's they were you know, they were backlogged for a while. They were. Yeah. They, they were. Um, and we, you know, we certainly had some slow times, but. I mean, right now it's 30 days. I mean, I think it's less than 30 days. Really? Yeah. So, and, and, you know, you're constantly sending them content to, to review, are yeah. you not? So, well, not only us, but the wine companies and the beer companies. The <laughs> beer companies all of them? Are, <laughs> the beer companies are, I mean, you talk about, you know, number of different items, beer companies. Right. And, and you know, it's hard to pick a name for these damn things because the beer companies have got so many beers and they got to name all of them. Not, no disrespect, but you know, we have, you know, a handful of bourbons and whiskeys, but, and the beer, beer companies can have, you know, they, they take a, dozen, a lot. Yeah, yeah. They can have a dozen things. So, so uh, what, what was the last uh, item that you had actually sent to them for, you know, for the packaging or what have you? Yeah, it was decade down. Oh my was God. It decade down. decade down at 30, 30 days. I mean, really piece of cake. Yeah. You wow. know, the other thing the government's done for us, um, uh, please, you know, there was a really big piece of legislation that, that got made permanent last year, and um, it, it relates to federal excise tax. Um, hmm. So if you're a small distiller like we are, mm -hmm. um, up to a certain amount of gallons, mm. you pay a lower federal excise tax. We're, okay. Yeah, so this came in in 2018. It was a temporary law for two years. Uh, it was a bipartisan um, piece of temporary legislation. There was, I think, Ron Wyman from... Oregon or Washington was the Democrat guy, and I forget who the the Republican guy was. But this thing kind of rolled along. It came in for eighteen and nineteen, and then they extended for two thousand twenty. But at the end of two thousand twenty, part of the the last stimulus they did in that year, they made this tax rate permanent. Huh. So you know, for little guys like me, we have been helped by the government um, to be more competitive, and and you know, so and that help actually helped you. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, good the tax, deal. The tax is a third of our cost. On average, yeah, a third of the you know traditionally would would go to the government. Um, right, right, right. Now that cost is who's this FICA guy? Why is he keep taking my money? <laughs> 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 All right, what's next? That's on the so. capital F, actually. <laughs> <laughs> which which bourbon's up next? Jim? So I yeah, you tell me. We got the decade down in front of us and the uncut, which is your your flagship, right? Right. The backbone right. bourbon uncut. That's the. I, the I think we were talking about we were going to do the decade down next. I, I think that's what we had just talked about. But yeah. Nolan, on you, wh which one would you uh, would Let's you do the uh, uncut? Okay, do the uncut. Do the uncut because so um, I cheated. I've 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 had the uncut. That's okay. So um, when it comes to having good bourbon, I think we can cheat. So yeah, Steve, <laughs> your, your, your sales connection, Steve. He uh, he he had a a, a sample bottle. Yeah. Uh, it was almost yeah. empty yeah. <laughs> in his car, and he he left it with me. Nice. Um, he left it with me when we. Uh, when we uh, 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 met him, and he was like, "Oh, here we're gonna do this. You gotta try. You know, take this with you." And I'm like, "Oh, okay." Um, did you? Did I get you a pour of that? You did, did not. You kept it for oh, yourself, man. Right. Come on. We've been we've been doing <laughs> so many. Tastings. I wanted to do this one first because I think it's traditional. Yeah. Um, we've got the decade down, which I think my word for decade down is elegant. Mm. Um, backbone and cut is traditional for me when I think of. Um, this bourbon, I think you're going to get it. It certainly has a style of its own. I think the, you know, other distilleries, you know, there's a there's a difference. Um, I get kind of a fatness to uh, to backbone uncut. This, which I think speaks to the richness of it. This is about a five year old um, bourbon. Hmm. This this one's coming in at uh, one thirteen nine. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Uh, so almost one fourteen proof. So we're we're moving in the right direction with proof. Because we well, started we're jumping, yeah, we're jumping around, we're jumping yeah. around yeah. a little bit. Decade down is going to be a little bit less, but right. so is, I wanted to go next yeah. because there's some enhancements to the way we've blended decade down. It's a richer, okay. Because um, you, you said it's a blend. It's a blend where where the uncut. That's the it's, yes. uncut, it, it, unfiltered. It's ten Brr. barrels, and we've done this for all twenty three batches. Ten barrels at a time, all fifty three gallon. Nice. We dump them. We put the least possible amount of filtration on it. Yeah. We want little bits of black powder to be yeah, in the bottle. Of course. We love that. I want to yeah. chew on my. Uh, yeah, exactly. I want to chew on my bourbon. I'm just saying. You know? <laughs> <laughs> if you don't uh, touch your back when I cut, you're gonna find a little bit of a uh, <laughs> little bit of black dust. Again, it's not a great, harmful. A great color. Yeah, uh, well, yeah. A nice. Yeah, it's got a nice. Yeah. Is there a hint of amber in there? Is that just his red room that we're in? Nah, I think I, I put it up to the uh, to light. There's there's a hint of amber there's in there. There's definitely yes. amber in that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Definitely. Um, 
but for 113 proof, it's pretty. I mean, it's really, it's it's it's. I want to. I don't want to say soft, but because at the back there's a little bit of a bite, but it's pretty. All right, so I've had 113 sticky. and higher. Okay, yeah. personally, that is a very. You said light. It's it's lightweight to me. I mean, yeah. lot in terms of uh, mouthfeel. There's a there's a lightness to it, um, but but it's just, it's just really. Uh, it, 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 the, the proof doesn't, you wouldn't think that it's 130. No. You think that's probably 90, 95. Um, it's, it's got some, it, it's got some of that red fruit in it. It's mm -hmm. not quite cherry, but, but there's some, the, you know, what, what the thing, when, when you say the fruit, the black fruit, the red fruit, yeah. um, you know, there's a little bit of astringency in that, yeah. right? Yeah. Just a hint. And, but there's, but overwhelmingly there's, there's that sweetness from the fruit. And I get a nice little balance of that where there's, um, I'm getting a great sweetness. It's a little tart, but but at the same time, um, it's got just a touch of astringency, which I like in in, in bourbon. I think, and, they, um, and there's just like a, it's just on the edge mm -hmm. of having an ethanol taste. Um, I haven't really gotten ethanol out of the other ones, and this is just on the edge. And I think that might be because of the high proof. Mm -hmm. um, it's just at the edge, just at the edge of, of that taste. But that could you said you said a word a second ago. Astringency, uh, 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 yeah. Astringency, yeah. So um, it's 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 right at the it was right at the edge there. The astringency, I think, would be more of a um, on there the was, sides there of your was mouth. A different, there was a different word that yeah. you used. Uh, crap. I hate the word. Yeah. You you said it even earlier is it had more of a like a decadent feel. I think it, it's elegant. It was an elegant feel. I think you said that was about the decade down. Right. This has more of a decadent feel to it. Yeah, I think it's that it's that kind of um, lush, sweet. Um, you know, it's not it's not a flat sweetness. There's a little bit of that, I'd say, tautness, astringency, however you want to describe it. It was the word tart. 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 Yeah, yeah, right. that's it's like not, a confection. It's, it's not tart, tart, yeah. but it's just there a little bit. That, that's what the, the, it and was. It, the tart. It's 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 just that right. edge. It gives yeah. it an edge. It's right. it's a little edgy. Right. It's like silk almost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, silk velvet. Yeah. You know, it's just as it sits on on the roof of my mouth, it, it, you just kind of get that silky, creamy yeah. feel out so of yeah, it. So now that was, now that we're fifty minutes in. Yeah. <laughs> full disclosure, <laughs> we don't know what we're doing. We haven't. The, the whole purpose clip. of the man cave <laughs> is to talk to people that know what they're doing, right. and 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 to learn from you. And and so like when I say it's like on the edge of like an ethanol taste, it, it, that tart. I was trying to find the right word. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, tart was closer to what I what I was trying to show sure. again. So we're not uh, sure. we're we're not super aficionados, right? And that's that's no, the whole we, point. We just we enjoy it. Yeah, and it, it's it, the whole thing sprung from I'm, I'm taking a walk with my wife, and she was like, "You are cranky." She goes, "Pour <laughs> yourself a bourbon and let's take a walk." <laughs> and then I go, "I got the screwball idea." I go, "Because I like bourbons, yeah. um, but I want to learn more about it." I go, I'm going to start a podcast with Matt about learning about bourbon. Yeah. You just want to start and a podcast. I'm call it, then yeah. you called me. And then I'm going to I'm gonna call it the Man Cave Happy Hour. And she's like, go for it. Yeah. And I'm like, really? Yeah. And I'm like, I was texting Matt before we were done with the walk. <laughs> I was searching the name to yeah. make sure it was available. And, you know, but uh, so that so, I mean, that's the thing. Matt and I are trying to trying to learn. Um, Do you know how and we far really we really appreciate your your, yeah. to, your tutelage this yeah. evening. Well, um, um, you know, it's all different. For different people have different experiences, but but you know that's what you know. I, I think you got to feel your way through this stuff. And yeah, I think we're not having ice on it, and that's a whole nother component to drinking bourbon. And I, we we're being a little bit serious about it, I've, and, I've, I, and that's fine. That's fine. But you know, really, you know, this stuff is going to work on ice. Um, but it, people get different things out of it and you feel your way through it it's, I've, I've splashed water in a couple of them i don't yeah. know if you've noticed while i was doing it i did uh just yep. to see <laughs> yeah which is really um, important if, if it was changing just it up open it up absolutely. a little bit, yeah. a little bit. Absolutely. it was uh, so that's important because what happens is the the water it vaporizes some of the alcohol so you're going to release more of those aromas you're also going to get a little bit different flavor profile when we when we taste seriously to evaluate buying certain barrels we we don't have any ice but we we have we have glasses that you know are, I'll help you to get the aroma, but but we we do it neat, and then we do it with a little few drops of water, and 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 that's how you you know really get a sense yeah. of what you're working with. So. Yeah, folks that have listened in to uh, previous episodes or what have you, I'm a, I always say I'm a purist. Mm -hmm. I I drink my bourbon, my whiskey, my rye neat. Yes, I'm always a neat guy because I I want that that initial feel the entire time. Right. 
So if I want to open it up and throw a, you know, a, a ball of ice in there, you know, that's a treat, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but I, I typically will go things through or go through things neat mm -hmm. personally. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm excited. Cause it's like, I, I, I'll sit down and I gotta get up for work at six in the morning and you know, I can't, I can't be, I can't be, you know, Hammering them back on a Wednesday night. Hey, kids, here we go. Another <laughs> movie. <laughs> Maybe I want one, right? So I, I usually do like a, a big chunk of ice yeah. and a pour. That way it'll last like the whole evening. Yeah. And, you know, it melts down. And, and, you know, I like a bourbon that can can stand up to that. Mm -hmm. um, in your experience, how is how's Because I different bourbons, uh, you know, they'll stand up. Uh, mm -hmm. some, will, some will work in cocktails. Some mm -hmm. won't work in cocktails. Um, so for you, how is it, how does it stand up to ice or, or neat? I think the, the, the hot proof is going to help, um, with the ice. I'm a big fan of a big rock mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, because you're going to get the progressions at a, at a nice pace. You know, that first sip is going to be tight, big, you know, within a minute or two, you start, you're going to start to get that middle place where yeah. the oils have started to interact with the water and it's opened up a little bit. And then at the end, you know, um, it's going to be. You know, weak or, or softer or, or something which mm -hmm. if you're going to have a couple of those it's, you know you have a nice journey along the way you can, yeah, uh, yeah you can get like an angry big you know wild <laughs> bourbon up front and at the end it's you know you're shaking hands and hugging so i mean yeah, it's yeah. great that that sounds like a number of nights for me <laughs> yes. to be honest with you <laughs> yes so i haven't tried the backbone uh over ice yet but that's that's uh that is on the horizon i'm pretty sure because i got that i got that bottle at home yeah. And uh, yeah, my wife and I, we just went down to uh, Florida for spring break and our, our, our 23 year old son was home alone. Uh, he didn't touch few, it. I had a few friends over and I was, I was a little worried about my bourbon shell. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, I, I was like, I, I gotta get a, like a system, maybe like <laughs> yellow ribbons. I'll tie on the ones like, don't touch these. The rest of them have your way yeah. with it. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I was a little worried. I was a little worried when it's, uh, and you came home and all the kids yeah. were still there. Yes. Yeah. Well, I got a Japanese Blanton's uh, and really? I pulled it out. Yeah. And I pulled it, a, a, you know, it, a friend of mine, his his partner was traveling and he came home with like six bottles. He's like, you want one? Wow. And, he, and he's like, sold it to me for like a hundred bucks. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I pulled it out for Easter to share with my brothers uh, and my brother-in-laws. And uh, I left it on the counter and I'm like, oh, crap, man. <laughs> Yeah, I hope the boy and his buddies don't come over. And go, oh, there's a bunch of bourbon yeah. here. Yeah, you got any look at look at the one with the pony on it. Let's do that. Uh, <laughs> it's in mid stride. Wait a minute, that's the hardest one to find. Yes. So those ones, th so. that's barrel strength, right? Or what's a, uh, that's a big proof. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. They're good. They, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, but they survive. So they, yeah. they. So I was a little worried. <laughs> I was a little worried on her. Bring it. But uh, after trying it. Mm -hmm. um, and then smelling it again, mm -hmm. uh, I'm getting more of a sweetness mm -hmm. uh, on the second nosing. I, don't, I already um, finished mine. What are you waiting uh, for? Getting much more sweetness on the second nosing. I, I was going to go decade down. Yeah, let's there. go decade down. Yeah. Because you pulled out this other one, uh, Jamie, the triple down light whiskey. But that's we're where gonna we go got to start the end because that's at, <laughs> that, that fireballs at 130. <laughs> um, So decade down um, anniversary, although it's a 10 year anniversary, uh, there is no bourbon in this that's 10 years old. Hmm. Most of it is six to seven years old. Okay. Which by the way, I think is a very, very good place to drink uh, bourbon. I think you will get a lot of satisfaction out of bourbon that's between six to 10 years old. Mm -hmm. um, Fair. But what makes Decade Down unique is that- I love the packaging. I yeah. just love the, the colors of the packaging itself. Well, I got a story about the name too, which I'll tell you here in a second. Please, but, please. Um, if you just shut up for a second, Matthew. <laughs> sure, sorry. <laughs> so I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna sit back and drink. Never mind. We wanted to do a, a special. Uh, yeah, look, we we wanted to do release, and and as I say, we have more variety now than uh, than ever before. The first uh, finish, the, the first uh, finish finishing cast we used were these sherry barrels. Uh, and we put mm. some really good bourbon in it. Actually, the bourbon in this is that is some of the, all of the bourbon is from those barrels we bought in 2014. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah, yeah. That were aged a little bit longer? Yeah. Okay. Well, they from the were air dried. Right, okay, right. air dried. Oh, okay. Uh, the color on this is dark. 
Well, that's from the sherry barrels. Yeah, it's much. This yeah. is much darker than the other. In the yeah. the triple down light is, is light. We'll talk about that. But this is this is a noticeably darker yeah. in the bottle. So seventy five percent of this is a straight bourbon that is between. Most of it was six to seven years old. We used one that was around five years old. Yeah. Which what that's what drives the age statement. But we we actually picked the barrels. We knew what the barrels were. You know, kind of there's a term called honey barrel. We we picked hmm. honey barrels for this. So that was seventy five percent of the blend. The other twenty five percent was this was this really good bourbon that had been in cherry barrels for a year. Hmm. So um, you know, I I almost brought I still got some of this stuff that was in cherry barrels for a year and I, I've got probably about a, a third of a bottle and if we had a smaller group I probably would have brought it but yeah, yeah, yeah. it is so rich it's like a dessert mm. Mm. it's like a dessert but but when we put the blend together we wanted we wanted a more of a traditional bourbon flavor we wanted some astringency um, which I think balances the bourbon but then that sherry adds a just a, a nice underlying complex sweetness um, there's a dryness to the sweetness it's I get kind of a you, you definitely get more of a prune kind of a or, or a dried. All right. So we've been doing this for almost three years. I, you're the first person to say the word prune in a prune feel out of it. I'm not kidding. You know, I don't ever think anyone ever said the word prune as far as a, a taste profile. I was thinking of purple. I was going like a plum. I'm I'm persnickety. I'm I'm a fussy. I'm a fussy, fussy eater. And I don't, you know, apples, oranges. I, I eat crap out of those what happens but, if you put uh, tomatoes on your sandwich like oh. pickles pickles that's what I'm, it is. I'm allergic i break out in hissy fits <laughs> wow yeah um that's the condition it is <laughs> it is it is so i'm a fussy fussy eater so when it, it's like because i don't eat plums i don't eat pears i know what they smell like and i know what they taste like and i know i don't want to eat them uh peaches Matt could eat a peach all day oh you're speaking my language uh, yeah but uh uh <laughs> Yeah, that's a little dirty, yes. but um, <laughs> but it, it, so it, I was I was thinking a, a, like a plum, but you said a, a, prune. a prune or a okay. fig. I mean, if you guys fig. have figs, okay, go look. Fig is probably better. Fig, uh, yeah, fig is better because um, it's not as heavy as as a prune, but it's uh, it's at uh, the dry that dried fruit, the mm -hmm. the dried fruit. That, that, that sweetness you get out of a dried fruit mm -hmm. is different than the the the, the wet fruit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, yeah, and I say it's not a big a, dried fruit it's guy. Ri it's richer. Yeah. It's it's richer. But you, yeah. but you see why the astringency matters because seventy five percent of this is really good straight bourbon. So when you have a lot of that sherry mm -hmm. and these tones that we're talking about, and that's what we felt like when we had just the sherry that it was too much. You might have you might have half a glass and think, ah, man, that's too much. So what? So what? When you blend, one of the things you've got to do is you've got to. You've got to balance what you're working with, and I tell you what, it's the it, it's we wanted people to have be able to have more than one. We wanted people to have two glasses. Mm -hmm. I don't want oh, to say okay. one, more than two, because because if if it's so rich, you go, man, that was really good, but man, I can't have another one. We don't <laughs> want that. Okay, we want people to have two. You know, I mean, yeah. beyond that, you're on your own. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's got to be it's got to be something where it's not over the top. Um, something that's balanced, and that's the key to blending. I mean, everyone, you know, there's a bunch of people out there that I think that think, well, we'll just throw these things together and, and it'll be great. Right. We'll taste it once, and and but it's really a lot harder to do. Um, it's a lot harder to. You got to have the components first, but I think, um, you know, it's like sometimes when you cook, you just want to add a lot of cheese to something, and sometimes. <laughs> It sounds like in the first bite is great, but then you know, but after right. the fifth bite, you go, oh, man, this is a little bit too rich." That's for me, a bit so. too much garlic, Jamie. You know, uh, exactly. Garlic's never too much. One. Nolan, I'm calling you, man. There's never too much cheese. <laughs> <laughs> but no, well, you're, for you're, me, there's no, never you're, too but, much. You're right. you're but your point, your right. point is yeah. taken. Yeah. yeah, it's just if you add too much, it may not be the right thing. Right. You no. Know? And, so uh, the decade down is this a, a a regular item or is this a specialty item? It's a specialty item. Okay. Um, it's a right now it's a once a year release. Um, it's going to be October November, around our anniversary is December. So okay, so it'll be like a usually like that. Yeah, the same sort of blend each time. It'll be yeah. I think we're going to stick to right that. Uh, it'll, it'll be pretty close, but um, we we're gonna we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go through. This is only. 
maximum probably eight or nine barrels. Right. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Wow. And we would do more if it grows and becomes popular, but we're going to pick those barrels. We're going to get stuff that uh, we feel like is um, a honey barrel. How um, many how many states are you available in right now? We're in about 20. Okay. Uh, there's a few that, you know, are, are state controlled and, you know, I wouldn't count them like Oregon is one that we're sure. in, but Ooh. we might sell a case to them a year. So, okay. But uh, East Coast, West Coast, Texas, Midwest is a big, big market for okay. us. Okay. Um, Good for you. So, so here in the Metro Detroit area, Michigan. So, uh, do you on your website? Do you have a place people can find yes. where you're available? Yes. Okay. At least we can find the distributor. We have a distributor, and some states have given us uh, where to buy, it, like Michigan has. Yeah. And where we've got that information, we put it on the website. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Sure. So the backbone uh, available in Michigan, but. Uh, not in large quantities. Not in large quantities, right. but I really like my distributor, and I'm yeah. gonna, I'm leaning to give him more and more. So yeah. I hope I hope you heard that Uday. Michigan, <laughs> Michigan, <laughs> Uday's here. Uday's here. here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Steve's here. Uday's here. There's a party going on. People can see it in our camera. Yeah. Uh, there's like the party going on. People are like killing the bottles he brought up yeah. there. Well, yeah. good. That's what so, they're for. Yeah, they're. Uh, it's uh, Steve. Steve put together a nice little event here. Yeah. Um, all for this. All for the tasting. Yeah. I, Back, I appreciate it. Backbonebourbon.com. Yes. Right? Uh, uh, there's so much to, but there's so much uh, more to talk about. We would love to have you back. No, in there's, one more, there's, one more to, there's one more. There's one more. There's still man. one more, we, but there's so much more to talk yeah, about. You have been great. You guys keep, have had great questions. Um, keep away from open flames. <laughs> Is, uh, we're going, the, the, the label says lights right across the front. And then you look down at the bottom, you go, Holy shiitake mushrooms! That says one thirty. <laughs> Talk to uh, me about the the triple down lights. Well, so I got to tell you about the name. Um, yeah. yeah. So we bought uh, back in two thousand fourteen. We bought some light whiskey barrels. Um, what do you mean? What light whiskey? Barrels? Light whiskey is actually a kind of whiskey. If you go to the TTB uh, definition bible, uh, just like bourbon has a definition, rye has a definition, light whiskey's got a definition, and, and I'll give you the, the you know the the highlights. Fair Please. Play. It's a, it's, it's a corn. Um, it, it's high corn. Um, typically it's entry proof is a lot higher than bourbon. Bourbon can't go in at a high, higher than I think 125. Mm. This can go in up to uh, 140. Yeah, proof. baby. 140 proof. <laughs> so, uh, and the other thing about light whiskey is it can never see a new barrel. So these are all ah. used barrels. Ah. Um, so entry proof the, the the mash build and the new barrel or the used barrel because it Those says whiskey three. not bourbon on it. Yeah, it's a whiskey yep. for sure. Um, it's not diet whiskey. So, <laughs> tell you. No, and we believe me, we've had people. Say, I, I like I like the sticker on the side, and you suggest a pairing of a cigar with it. As well, well, that's it's a single barrel. Uh, I have to. That's a caveat. This is okay. a single barrel product. Fair play. But I bought it tonight because. It sort of has taken on a legendary status around the country. Mm -hmm. uh, I get a lot of calls about, hey, can we do a, a light whiskey barrel? One of the things that we haven't talked about, and, and it may not be obvious on the bottle, but this is a 14-year-old whiskey. Oh, really? Yes, it is. So it's it's just its own kind of whiskey. It's it's very sweet, but it's very interesting sweet. It's not over, it, it is kind of over the top, but, but man, that first one, it's it's super super satisfying, um, and you won't get that it's 130 proof. At least, I'd be surprised if you did. So let's try. It. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah. So um, Rob Harris just joined us, and he commented he because I got the Bone Snapper single barrel rye, and it's fantastic. Oh my gosh, yeah. Um, Rob Rob's really cool. Um, and, he's got uh, quite he's got quite the uh, Rob. We, we started he, we started with the uh, with the with the rise. Yeah. And we're about we're about seven bottles past that. So <laughs> wrap your head around that. Yeah. <laughs> this is light. The color on this is well, so that's that used light. barrel. That's that used barrel. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. All so, right. Um it's coming in lighter because it's all right. But I, I literally get calls from all over the country. Hey, can I get a can I get a barrel of so why triple down? Why why well, here's triple the, here's down? Here's the background. Right? So we bought yeah. these barrels in 2014. We put them in um, we have a product called Back, Backbone Prime, which is a blended bourbon, mm -hmm. um, and two or three percent of Backbone Prime is light whiskey, and we liked it because it adds some complexity, it added some alcohol, some proof. But we had these, I don't know, it was twenty barrels or so, and we just weren't selling a lot of Prime. Um, and 
you know, these barrels were expensive. So, so we try to use, we used the barrels in prime. So there's one, right? Right. I try to sell the barrels. Okay. However, that was two. Couldn't sell them. No one wanted to buy them. Now you can't get these kind of barrels. The world's gone nuts on these barrels in the secondary market. You can't find them anymore. Yeah. But this is in 2014. So number three. So number three was, well, shit, let's try to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> so we sent it out. We sent it, it, it out as a single barrel. We, uh, we, we, the first establishment of the taste was bland. And, and the guy, a good friend of mine, he loved it. He took two barrels. <laughs> shit. Okay, now, they're very low yielding. It's at 14 years old. I mean, you might right, only right. get 10, 15 cases out of this. Right, six right. Batch, right. But what, and what's the proof on this? This is 130, and believe me, but this is kind of a low. I mean, this is kind of low for this. I've got a bunch that are in the high 140s. A Jeez. bunch. Yeah. So you know, this is you have to have a, a license to drink this. You, <laughs> you need to be in a safe environment. You need to be with someone that you trust. Away right. from open flames. Right. For away folks that are on video, safe environment. <laughs> safe, yeah, 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 yeah. The man cave is a safe environment. It very, very, very much. Well, yeah. Oh. oh, man. It's it's a good one to end on. Um, it's a good one to end on. All right. So I didn't sip that one. Ooh. Buttery. There's some. I'm getting a, a creamy. but Not creamy. But, but creamy. A, creamy's right. Butter, buttery. Right. Not, not cream, but buttery. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. There's um, <laughs> Rob. Rob said single barrel, one forty plus. Sign me up. Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> See, and Rob. Rob's yeah. one of those like you know. There's there's a bunch of bourbon clubs in the Metro Detroit area. The the Michigan Bourbon Club, the Detroit Bourbon Club, uh, bourbon lovers of United States. And Tell Detroit. them they, they can I don't know. whoever but, they are. Contact me directly. I'd love to send them. Get them hooked up with some samples. Yeah. Fair play. Definitely. Oh, there you go, Rob. Yeah. So that, that, that triple down but, real quick. Uh, I, I just, I, I, I did not sip this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to tell you, I did not sip this, but as it's continue, oh. continuing to linger. I'm not feeling 130. I'm not feeling 130 at all, but there's that movie theater butter that's going mm -hmm. on. Right. I like that. I haven't thought of it that way, but I agree with it. It's a, it's a creaminess. I mean, yeah. Jamie said that. Yeah. It, so there's a, there's a million ways to describe sweetness, mm -hmm. but creamy is a sweet kind of a flavor. Yeah, but fair. there might be a little bit of a textural component to that too. Um, it's a, how I'm not sure the... if you're getting that, but but it's it, it's not a it's not a dark whiskey. I don't get a ton of oiliness in it, which I did in the decade down, which we just had. Right. But there's something kind of really that's a creamy about it. There's a that's very special. That triple down is very special. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's the proof. But that was a ver that was very special for me. That yeah. is something that I would seek out and, and want to have. So on the my triple show. the triple down. This is a special expression, right? Yes. So not super widely available. Although Michigan is one of your favorite states. Yes. <laughs> so so it's really only a, available in a single barrel. There is a very distinct possibility that it'll be available in very limited quantities as a standalone product. Sure. Hmm. My problem with that is um, we sell in single barrels, and then also I'm using it to do some blending as well. It's a great blending agent, um, but I, I just it's it's it, like I, like I said earlier, you it just with the bourbon business, you don't know how things are going to turn out. You, you think you're making mistakes, and they end up being, you know, happy, marvelous, happy marvelous. accidents. Absolutely. Right. So yeah. when we bought these barrels in 2013 or whatever it was, I mean, in, in 2015, I was basically. Whatever hair I have left, I was pulling my hair out trying to get rid of them because I, you know, I wanted, I needed cash to put into something else I could sell. Fair. And then, um, then they turn out like this. And, and then, you know, if I have to call, if I have to boil it down to like one of the things that's really surprised me over the however many years we've been in business, it's this thing that this thing was an afterthought. It's kind of like the band that did that quick. They made, they wrote a song in ten minutes, and then it's like the best song they ever did. <laughs> right, it's kind of like that for us. I yeah, mean, yeah. I had no idea. Um, and then to to give you a little bit of under the belly info, in the secondary market in the world I operate, where we buy barrels, this this these barrels are virtually they're like hen's teeth. You can't get uh, them. I've got wow. a bunch of them, fortunately. Um, nice. So and and actually, I have some that are they have an even. These barrels, um, I think I have about 20 of them that are all around about 155 proof. Oh, my oh. goodness. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't wait to send them out. Uh, uh, I can't wait to send them out. Itching for it? Yeah. Each, each I, want the come with his own I want to come on, Eileen, to happen already. Come on. I want that one hit one. Come on. 
Oh. <laughs> No, so we have picked your brain so much this evening. I yeah. cannot thank you enough for for the opportunity well, it, to Good sit questions. down and have yeah. easy, questions. Easy, you made it easy. Um, and, you know, let's face it, we're tasting bourbon. How bad could it be? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, so. This is called the conversation, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah. backbonebourbon.com. That will get people to, to all the different spirits and, and all the different expressions that, yeah. <laughs> that you got going. And if anyone's listening that's part of a bourbon club and you want to you want to have a crack at our single bar program. I'd love to send you samples, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, you know, the one, of, one of the things I'll say about the single bar program is we want it to be a great experience. Mm -hmm. We don't want it to be a drag. I mean, we want to send you great stuff. We want to make it easy. Mm -hmm. We're going to send you lots of information about what we send. Um, and we just we want it to be good. We want you to buy one and then shoot uh, two or three months or six months, buy another one. Fair. So anyway, that's my marketing. Yep. No, no, no. You know, thank you again for the time yeah, this evening. It, you're, yeah. You know, your your brain is amazing. You know, wh whatever you got going on, keep doing it. <laughs> and, and thank you to those folks that chimed in tonight. You know, Bill and, and Robert, thank you for uh, listening yeah. to the Man Cave Happy Hour yeah. this evening uh, yeah. online. Thank you, guys. thank you. But uh, you know, you can find us on all the uh, all the great podcast platforms that are out there. That's wherever so, fine podcasts are sold. There it is. Yeah, yeah you guys Boy. have been great. Thank you very much. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Cheers. 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 I get a refill. Yep. <laughs>